Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and here are five ways to get more performance from your bike. First up, Ninja Star because nothing is faster than a ninja. What this actually is, is a front sprocket. If you wanna make a huge difference to the way your motorcycle goes for the least amount of time and money, change your gearing. So, who remembers high school physics? Basically, if we enlarge the radius of the rear sprocket, we have more leverage, so it takes less force for the wheel to go around. The downside is that the chain now has to travel further to make my tire do a full revolution. We get the exact same effect by decreasing the size of the front sprocket, since that changes the ratio by the same amount. Damn it, that still sounds complicated, so here's what happens in the real world. Going down one tooth in the front, which is the same as going up three teeth in the rear, equals more acceleration and a slower top speed. Going up one tooth in the front, or going down three teeth in the rear, equals less acceleration, but a faster top speed. The question is, should I make the changes to my front sprocket or the rear one? There are benefits to both. I mean, changing your rear sprocket allows for more precision, since every single tooth on the rear has less overall effect than a single tooth on the front. On the other hand, it is kind of nice to change your front sprocket, because if you go up or down a single tooth, you'll notice a big difference in the way your bike handles just from that one adjustment. The other nice thing about changing your front sprocket is that you probably won't have to buy a different length chain, because the axle adjustment on the rear of your motorcycle can make up for the distance of a single tooth. Some people say that you should always buy a new chain when you change your sprockets anyway because the two are married and therefore must grow old together. And basically the danger is that your sprocket's going to wear away a little bit quicker if you made it with a chain that's already been around the block a few times. Personally, I don't think that's really such a big deal because odds are your sprocket is going to wear away quicker whether you replace the chain or not because dropping a tooth on the front makes the chain do a tighter U-turn and that always creates more friction. Now you might be thinking that it's stupid to screw with sprockets. I mean, surely the brilliant engineers at BMW got it right the first time. Wrong. Manufacturers often pass noise restrictions by purposely gearing their bikes low, and that way the motorcycle doesn't have to hit high RPMs to achieve high speeds, and it's therefore quieter. I mean, some manufacturers, like Ducati, actually specifically design their motorcycles to go down a tooth from the factory setting. It's crazy. Now sprockets are a neat way to give your bike more acceleration or more top speed, but you can't have it both ways because we're not actually making any power, just shifting it around. Plus swapping sprockets often throws off your odometer and speedometer, which is really annoying. So instead, let's take a more purist pursuit of performance. More air, more gasoline, bigger explosions. What you're looking at here is a combustion sandwich. It's the way our motorcycles like to eat. We have air intake, air exhaust, and then fuel controllers in the middle. No motorcycle is complete without all three components, and if you try to improve just one of them, your motorcycle will develop an eating disorder running either too lean or too rich. Now that I've totally milked my sandwich metaphor, let's look at each component. Motorcyclists always install the aftermarket exhaust first, that way the hot babes will know where to find them. But there are also weight-saving benefits, especially if you install one of the full systems that forgets, forgets to include pesky legal things like catalytic converters, you can save a lot of weight. The real gain though is airflow. Even with a little slip on like this, my motorcycle will be able to puff harder than Puff Daddy. That's all well and good, but if I can't breathe air in at the same rate as my exhaust blows it out, I've achieved precisely nothing. So get yourself a high flow air filter. KNN makes the best washable filters in the world. You only ever have to buy one. Now my bike is gulping air like an Olympic swimmer, but all that's gonna do is make my engine run lean unless I can get more fuel in there too. And that's where the middle of my combustion sandwich comes in. If your bike is carbureted, then you need the jet kit. DinoJet makes the best ones. They often come with three different options, and for a bike with a high flow air filter and a high flow exhaust, it's usually the stage two jet that you want. But be prepared to try one of the other ones if your bike runs lean or rich. For fuel injected bikes, on the other hand, then you're gonna need a fuel controller. Now, smarter people than me have said that DinoJet's power commanders are the best, and so that's what I've chosen. Now, you're gonna have to download a fuel map onto this for your bike to run. There are lots of options online, but of course, any halfwit can throw his engine destroying map online. So what I always do is I look to the manufacturer of the fuel controller, power commander, or to the manufacturer of my exhaust, two brothers, to see if they have a map online that matches my particular bike and my particular exhaust. It has to be that specific. And one good hack is to actually look online and see if you can find a map for your bike and a particular exhaust before you actually buy that exhaust. And that way you're gonna make your purchase knowing that you already have a relevant fuel map in hand. Otherwise, it's off to the dyno to get a custom map made, but technicians charge by the hour and it's common to pay upwards of 500 bucks for a good tune. 
Now, for our third mod, how can I get quicker handling? Lighter wheels, and they're always going to be faster to turn in. If you've ever seen a gyroscope, you know that a spinning wheel resists any change to its axis. Well, that force is related to angular momentum, which itself is related to mass. Ergo, a lighter wheel is always easier to turn in. The other benefit is grip. When a light wheel hits a bump in the road, it's going to jump upwards with less force than a heavy wheel would. And so my suspension has an easier time pushing that light wheel back into contact with the pavement, giving me more grip. Entire books have been written on the concept of unsprung mass, but the gist of it is lighter wheel, quicker suspension reactions, better handling. The only downsides to lighter wheels are obvious. The metal is thinner and weaker. It's not such a big deal at the track, but if you spearhead a pothole, it's more likely to get bent out of shape. Also, the really featherweight alloys and carbon fibers, inherently expensive. Fourth performance mod, steel braided cables, better pads. But hold on, does a mod for braking faster really count as a mod for going faster? Yes. Watch MotoGP, the answer is yes. I got my stainless steel lines from Galfer because they've been stopping sport bikes since World War II. The Teflon line steel will not expand, and so all the pressure I put into my lever goes straight into pushing my pads, which results in a stronger, more direct braking feel. Speaking of pads, I chose these EBC HH centered ones because they feel very similar to what comes stock on a lot of super sport bikes, and that's what I'm used to. 50 bucks for a pair, big ventilation channel to prevent overheating, they're stellar. But if you're in an intermediate or an advanced group on track day, the Double H is still going to fade on you. You'll probably want to go up to something like the EPFA, which is EBC's most race-worthy pad that you can still legally run on the street. From there, you'd go up again to a track-only pad like the GPFAX. And finally, my fifth mod is a set of high-performance tires. This is a Metzler Racetech RR, easily the fastest choice from a 2017 Sport Tires video. It mainly shines between here and here. And because the rayon carcass is so rigid, it gives you ruthless surgical precision when you're lining up that next turn. And then when you hit it at the very limit, this tire is monumentally stable, more so than Supercourses, Q3s, RS10s, especially more so than the older Interax. If you have the balls to get over to the limit, a proper Supersport tire is the most effective performance mod on this list. And yet, there are even better mods out there that money can't buy. This piece of meat can be improved more than anything else on your bike. Read a twist of the wrist, learn to properly tune your suspension, book some track time with better riders than yourself, and stay in good shape. I once had a 300 pound man explain to me that his fancy clutch lever shaved 30 grams. Think about that. So, we've now seen five mods that make your motorcycle faster. Thanks for watching.